All right. Hey, everybody. Blessings of the Lord be upon you. This is the day the Lord has made, and we ought to rejoice. We're not going to. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Our Father, we are grateful to you this day for your blessings showered upon us. You've ushered us into a new environment, a new chapter, a new page of our lives, and we are grateful to you. Lord, now I pray for this, your precious ones, under the sound of my voice. I pray that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted by any religious force. I pray that understanding will increase and abound in our lives, bringing us to the saving knowledge of the finished work of Jesus Christ. And for this, we say thank you. I pray that this broadcast will go forth and bless your people in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. If you are just tuning in, I salute you in Jesus' name and I declare to you that it is well with you and your house. It is well with you and your house. Now, um, if you come on the platform, if you are on the platform, please share the broadcast, this broadcast. Let it be a blessing to somebody. All right? Let it be a blessing to somebody because um, the purpose of the sharing is to just be a blessing. That's it. All right? We're not in a competition trying to... Uh, get a billion people of course we reach, we want to reach one billion people one million people with uh, with bibles so we're going to make sure that uh, we reach them so be a blessing to somebody all right and um by sharing the broadcast to everybody your friends loved ones and um let them also come into that saving knowledge amen okay um if you have your Bibles, if you have your Bibles, let's go straight to the Word of God and um, see what um, the Lord has for us. That says the Spirit of God. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's do that right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Again, share this broadcast. Let you know, be a, a blessing to somebody. I'm trying to do that myself too. Okay, so let's give you, give you about a minute or two for you to do that and then we'll get to the word of god all right let's do that it's 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 very important that we we bless um we bless individuals we bless ourselves and um be a blessing okay and be a blessing okay let's do that let's do that and be a blessing all right whilst you are sharing and inviting friends and loved ones please get your bibles your notepads your pens and pencils uh the tools that um you use to um you know take notes um for your increase and growth it's very important that you you do that don't just write down please make sure you you go back and um and steady okay for your growth and increase beloved nobody can can do for you than what you can do for yourself all right my assignment is to bring you the word of god also to um, um challenge the belief of the unbelievers okay so that we will all come to the saving grace of our lord and savior jesus christ God does not want anyone to perish, but all of us to have everlasting life. And this is why we are commissioned by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to go into all nations with the gospel, all right, of salvation. What did Jesus come to do? To lead man and woman into the saving grace of God, to reconcile us back to God as a result of the sin, that, the trees and that took place, every man became a sinner. And so God, for he loved us still, made a provision to reconcile us back to himself 
through Jesus Christ. And this is why it's very important for you to understand and um, be able to also share with others. So on that note, I believe uh, we can, we can um, go to the word of God now, taking it from where we left off yesterday in Matthew. Come with me to Matthew, the 28th chapter, the last book of Matthew, Matthew, the 28th chapter. All right, we look at after the resurrection of Christ Jesus and um, the commission that he gave. We call it the Great Commission, the Great Commission. Beloved, every believer, every believer is to fulfill the Great Commission. Now, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, what, whatever time you have, ask yourself, am I fulfilling the Great Commission? As a believer, if you are a believer, Ask yourself, am I fulfilling the Great Commission? Am I doing the assignment of Jesus in whom I have believed and therefore position myself to be called a Christian? Am I doing that? Or have I just left it for others to do it? Am I doing that? Beloved, it's, it's very important. If you say you're a Christian and you are a follower of Christ and you are a believer, you believe in him and you believe what he has done for you and for mankind. Then you are to ask yourself, am I doing what he asked me to do? What he asked me to do. He says in Matthew, the 28th chapter, Matthew, the 28th chapter. If you have your Bibles, come with me to Matthew, the 28th chapter. Let's read it from the... Um, um, I'm reading from the Amplified Version of the Bible. Uh, let's pick it up from the 16th verse where he was speaking to us, the believers. The believers. Jesus was speaking to us. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus has designated. And when they saw him, they worshipped him by some doubt. But we, we addressed that yesterday. And um, you can please go to the YouTube which is the library of this ministry, and uh, make sure you get yourself the message or the teachings, which you have missed. All right, if you go to the YouTube, just put the name there, Patrick Quino Ministries, or just the name, and uh, it's gonna pop up. Click on the word that says subscribe. Subscribe, it's a free subscription, you don't need to pay for nothing. And um, all the messages is gonna be up there for your study and um, for your increase. Now, Jesus said in verse 18 of Matthew, Matthew 28 chapter, verse 18, Jesus came up and said, and said this, that all authority, all power in heaven and on earth is given to me. The 18, uh, 18 verse of the 28 chapter of Matthew, all power, all power, underline the word all, all power, and um, is given to me in heaven and on earth. And now verse 19, he continues to say that, go therefore and make disciples. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Now Jesus was very specific. He wasn't, he wasn't missing no words. He, he gave a specific instructions for a specific assignment. All right, this is to you believers. And if you are not a believer, Please uh, 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 listen attentively. Unbeliever is you, the individual who have not received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. That's is that simple. But for you believers who you have received him as your Lord and your Savior, this is your assignment. And we must do that. It's not cut for a, a specific people or persons. You are to go and make disciples. He says, verse 19, it says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me. Help them to learn of me. All right? Help them to learn of me and uh, um, to believe in me and obey my words. What are the words of Jesus? The words of salvation. I came to do good and not evil. 
I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. I came so that you will have eternal life. Those are the words of Jesus. I came that you may you may be saved from eternal damnation. I came so that you may have life and you don't perish. I came to let you know that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father, God the Father, except through me. I and the Father are one. These are the words of Jesus. So he says, go and make disciples of all the nations. Help the people to learn of me. Let them learn of me because you know me. You, you know me. So you have to let those who do not know me know me. I'm speaking to you believers. And that's who Jesus was speaking to. We the believers. Beloved, if you're going to just wait and expect that, you know, the, the your local assembly, where you call the church, the pastors have to do this work, then you don't, you haven't been taught right. And you really don't understand what Jesus has done for you. You and I are to go into all nations, not a specific person, not a particular person present individual like a pastor it's not the job of a pastor is if you consider yourself or call yourself a believer a christian you see that the, what you, some some of you may not have under come to understand is that your pastor says he's a christian and you say you're a christian and the common assignment between you and your pastor your prophets your evangelists your teachers your preachers the common denominator between you and them is that you both are Christians and Jesus has given you and them an assignment, a common assignment. And that is go to all nations and make disciples. Now, if you don't know what, what to do in terms of go and make the disciples or have, a, have this discipleship ministry, if you will, let me break it down for you. He says, help them to learn of me. Help them to learn of me. How, did, how would they learn of, how would they know Christ? You must go. You must go and teach them. Help them to, help the people, he says, to learn of me, to believe in me. To believe in me. To believe in me to believe what to believe that i came that man will have eternal life eternal life eternal life beloved this is this is the the the, the central um uh, part or point or the central uh focal point of the ministry of jesus christ all other things i don't know where it even came from for which we have fall into and believe and still not not even gotten it right and constantly just trying to uh you know um continue doing them but help the people he says to believe in me and obey my words and i've, I've given you some of the words that jesus spoke obey my words obey them well if you believe you will obey if you believe you will hallelujah and so and then he continued to say that baptize them okay baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit all right baptism somebody was asking me about baptism now baptism comes from the greek word baptizo baptism comes or came from the greek word baptizo which literally means um to 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 be sub submerged in a liquid to be submerged in a liquid and and here here you see that um uh, but you being baptized okay into an object 
you it's like but you are to baptize something put an object in a liquid jesus here representing represents the liquid baptize me baptize them in the father and the son and the holy spirit now these <laughs> These three names mentioned here are one. Mm -hmm. These three are one. Having different functions, okay, but one. We'll get there, but I want you to please circle what I've just said. We will get there. I don't know if we could do that today, but we'll get there. I, I don't want to go ahead of myself. So baptizing them in the name of the Father, he says, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded you. Now, watch this carefully. Teach them to observe everything that I have commanded you. So, there's a specific instructions that Jesus is giving to us, the believers, to do. So, if you say you're a believer, Okay, it's about time that you stop warming the church pews, but rising up to make disciples. It doesn't hurt to ask your colleague or your neighbor, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior for eternal life? Just continue with that, for eternal life. Because you, you, they have to, you know, there are, there are some people who need a reason to do whatever. Why should I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior for eternal life? Add that to it. So that they will know that it's not just, just, just a religion, some religion that you want to bring them in, but you want them to understand that they are, that God so loved them that their future, their destiny is more important than they are now. I hope you're understanding that. And so ask that. It's not, so you are to go and make disciples. You are not to sit down there and, 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 and you know, assume that that is the work of um, the, uh, the, uh, the evangelistic ministry or the, the department of uh, of that ministry of your church beloved no see this thing has been is been presented wrong this whole thing here and and in my humble little you know opinion i i how I, I i see especially in this in the fivefold ministry okay is is i don't know what is even done as good Honestly, I don't even know whether the fivefold ministry has done as good because here is, is a situation where now you have, you know, the departments, okay, that is to, is to help the body of Christ, okay, fighting each other. So I don't even know whether, whether the fivefold ministry has done as good. But the, more, the, most, the most important thing here is for you, the individual, to understand that Jesus has given you an assignment and that is for you to go and make disciples disciple okay multiply yourself that which you have received let the world know let your colleagues know let your friends know let your neighbors know that christ jesus and what he has done for them they don't know that you have to let them know listen if your pastor cannot reach your colleagues how do you think they are going to come to the saving knowledge of christ if you don't reach them how would they know if you don't go to them how would they come to know? Beloved, we have an assignment as believers. Okay? We have an assignment as believers. You know, stop. I think it's about time that you stop looking at 
your personal needs, which you're supposed to be, you're supposed to have as an addition, okay, to what God has for you. It's an addition. It's an you. It's about time you stop looking at your personal need and put the the needs of others first by Christ Jesus. Why do you think Jesus says go into all nations and make disciples of the people so that they will not perish but have everlasting life? Beloved, Jesus is about everlasting life. Jesus is not about your temporal situation where you are struggling to, to be rich. You are struggling to, to have the best house, to have the best cars, to have the best this, to have the best that. Jesus is about your 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 eternal life. Jesus is about your eternal life. So when we're talking about Jesus and all that, beloved, you need to understand that Jesus is about your eternal life. Jesus is not. It's not about about um, um, Jesus. It's not about um, your temporal situation. Are you listening? Come with me to come with me to um, John chapter ten, also verse. Let's look at verse twenty-eight to thirty. John chapter ten, John the tenth chapter. All right, and 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 I want to read this uh, to you. John chapter ten. He says, "Look at this." John chapter 10, verse 28, verse 28. I give them eternal life. Who is speaking here? Jesus. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. And I, I and the Father are one. <laughs> but the 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 let, let me let me read this and I show you exactly what I want you to see. Listen to the words. Remember, remember what we we read earlier. He says, "Help them." He said, "Let them know my words. Let them know my words." These are the words of Jesus. He says, "I give them eternal life." Anyone who comes to me receive eternal life. And that is so paramount and so important. Listen, Jesus had an assignment on this planet Earth to come and lead men, fallen men, men who have fallen from grace, who have fallen as a result of the sin committed by Adam, that everyone became a sinner. Jesus came to, to give us eternal life that whosoever believe in him, you will, you will move out of your eternal condemnation to eternal life. Look at verse 20, 28 again, he says, I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. I want you to underline that word, never. They shall never perish. So, all that you are you are struggling you are struggling to achieve and and you it looks like you are perishing because you are not you, you don't have this you are perishing or because you don't have that beloved that is religion and its teachings that is religion and its teachings and we need to move away from that we need to move away all right from that he says Look at this. The scripture says, and this is also what the words of Jesus. This is words of Jesus. Seek ye first. <laughs> uh, it says what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness and all other things will be added to you. Mm. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. And then Jesus says, go therefore to all nations and make disciples. Go and make disciples. 
These are, con these are uh, kingdom instructions that is given. And all other things will be added to you. I mean, we, we, we have flipped this thing so far wrong. It's, it's, it's sad. The more I look at it, it's like, you know, Scripture talks about eh, they that have understanding cannot be destroyed. Man, the day I got hold of that, that scripture, I said, wow, all I need is understanding. And in this ministry, I've told you time and again, you will, you will not miss this word. Those who have known my ministry for over 20 years, you will never, you won't miss this word out of any of the teachings or preachings. As long as you are part of this ministry or you know me, you will hear this word, understand it. And I want you to underline that or circle it. Come with me. Let me show you something about this, the word understand I'm talking about. The, um, the book of Proverbs. Okay. Come with me to the book of Proverbs. Um, let me show you something here. The book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter, chapter 2. All right. Come to Proverbs chapter 2. Proverbs chapter 2. I want to show you something here. Look at verse um, look at verse 10. Look at verse 10 and 11. 10 says, for skillful, for skillful and godly wisdom will, en will enter your heart and knowledge will be pleasant to your soul. Discretion, discretion will watch over you. Understanding will keep you. I'm reading from the, the Amplified Version. Um, I don't know which version you are using, but the New King James says, understanding will keep you. Understanding will keep you. Listen, it, it, it doesn't matter. It don't matter what you see about all this and all that get understanding and listen they will go and come and and meet you that you are still kicking <laughs> understanding will keep you beloved if we don't understand what jesus and his finished work is all about this then, then we really haven't come to understand who we are when we say we are christians then we really haven't come to understand that yet because if your belief and your understanding is christian in of christianity is about achieving this you know worldly stuff that we we have you know we a yeah, house i need a house i want i need a class i need a this and all those things then beloved you really haven't come to understand this whole deal of your Christianity. Because Jesus, Jesus was not all about that. Jesus was about the eternal life of man. And that is what he says we should go and make disciples of. Disciple others. That's what discipleship means. Disciple others. Bring others to the fold. Let them come and understand and also <clears throat> know that God, for, so, for God so loved them as he loved you. Because you are part of this world. For God so loved this earth, this world, that he sent his only begotten son, Jesus. What did he send him to, to come and do? What did he send him to come and do? Come with me to, um, uh, come with me to, to Romans, okay? Romans chapter five. Come with me to Romans chapter five. All right, let me acknowledge some of you, which um, I think I was just going ahead of myself. You all didn't come early, so let me acknowledge you now. Francesca. Blessings of the Lord be upon you. Listen, it is well with you and your house. All right, every one of you, pa Patricia. Um, hey, Pastor Ezekiel, 
Ezekiel, blessings of the Lord be upon you. Lee's grace, Lee's grace. Yesterday I saw a comment of you, uh, of your colleague, and uh, I, I like to demonstrate something very interesting to you. Well, you know what? Tell your colleague that water, it's 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 God, and the same God functions in the Son and in the Holy Spirit. Okay. You can, the same water, it can be hot, it can be cold, whichever one you want, but it's the same, <laughs> the same water. <laughs> I hope that helps you out. All right. Now, um, who else is there? <laughs> Stephen, blessings of the Lord be upon you. Stephen, blessings. Rose, it is well with you and your house. All right, let's go to the word of God now. Continue to invite your friends and share the broadcast to the world. All right? Share this broadcast to the world. Now, Romans, the fifth chapter. Let's take it from the um, uh, verse 12. Romans, 12 Roman, Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, through one man, and you know who that person is, okay? Adam. And death through sin. Death. Spiritual death through sin. So death spread to all people, no one being able to stop it or escape its power. We're reading from, we're reading Romans chapter 5, verse 12. And I'm going to start again and I'll start. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, so death spread to all people, no one no one being able to stop it or no one is able to stop it or escape its power because they all sin. They all sin was committed in the world before the law was given. But sin is not charged against anyone when there is no law against it. This is where you need to understand, you know, the, the law. Okay, this is where you need to understand the law you need to understand um that the law and also where we are which we have in case you miss any of the teachings please go to the library again this is the youtube of this ministry just put the name there and um you'll be able to get this those teachings now verse 14 says verse 14 says let me pick it up from verse 13 again sin was committed in the world before the law was given. But sin is not charged against anyone when there is no law against it. Verse 14. Yet death ruled over mankind from Adam to Moses. Well, that's where the sin, the sin was committed. The sin started from Adam. Yet death ruled over mankind from Adam to Moses. The lawgiver, even over those who had not sinned, huh? As Adam did. Adam, watch this carefully. Adam is a type of him, him, Christ. Okay, who was to come, but in reverse, Adam brought destruction, Christ brought salvation. What is salvation? Eternal life. What is salvation? Eternal life. When you are saved, saved from what? Saved from sin that its penalty puts you in eternal condemnation. Because, beloved, there's no remedy for sin. The law, as I've said it so many times, only showcased our sinfulness and our sinful nature. But there was no remedy for it. So here, scripture says, Adam brought destruction. Yeah, we know that by sin. Christ brought salvation. Christ brought salvation. So it's, it's so important for you to understand the ministry of Jesus Christ and, 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 and ask yourself, so therefore, what is all this that, 
you know, you are so consumed about prosperity. I have to be prosperous. And, and uh, the, the, the funny thing is, we've limited the word and uh, the, the big picture of prosperity to be money. Which is not. Prosperity is bigger than just money. Because you can have money and have a terminal disease or sickness and the money can buy the, the remedy for it. That's not prosperity. And those of you um, who um, are probably in the medical field, you, you probably have come across a patient who you understand or probably know that he or she is, is, is rich financially. But yet, they are laying on that sick bed with no cure. And that's not prosperity. And so you see, you see how religion has, has, has deceived. You see how religion has deceived believers to think that prosperity is all about getting financially rich, having the best car, having a big house, having you know, all those things and, you know, clothes looking good, that kind of stuff. Ain't nothing wrong with that, but wrong belief. Wrong belief. Now, so Jesus brought salvation. Salvation is eternal life. But watch this, verse 15. But the free gift of God is not like the trespass because the gift of grace overwhelms the fall of man. The gift of grace the gift of grace overwhelms the gift of grace overwhelms the fall of man the fall of man was as a result of the destruction that adam brought grace overwhelms that overwhelms that that fall of man grace where did grace come from grace is jesus and i've taught you that already if you go to John chapter 1, verse 17, you, you're going to see that there. Grace is Christ. Now, for if many died, we'll continue reading from verse 15. For if many died by one man's trespass, which is Adam's sin, much more abundantly did God's grace and the gift that comes by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ. Ha! Ha! Have you seen the ministry of Jesus? Grace overflows to benefit the many. Now, verse 16. Oh, man, I love this. No, it's the gift of grace like that, which came through the one who sinned. For on the one hand, the judgment following the sin resulted from the trespass and brought condemnation. But on the other hand, the free gift resulted from many trespasses and brought justification, the release from the sin's penalty for those who believe. So you see, grace has redeemed us out of the penalty of sin. Now, what is Jesus? You want to know what Jesus came to do? What that's what he came to do. This is what Jesus came to do. This is his ministry. This is what's all about Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh my, I love this. For those who believe. So when Jesus is saying, go, go to all nations and make disciples of the people. So therefore, in other words, he says, watch this now. Watch this. He says, Help the people to learn of me and believe in me. Glory be to God. Believe in me. Hallelujah. And so here he says, for those who believe. Verse 17. For if by the trespass of the one Adam, death reigned through the one Adam, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness reign in eternal life <clears throat> through the one Jesus Christ. So Jesus is eternal life. Beloved, how, how 
would people know this if you who have received this you're so excited if you don't tell others how would they know how would they know evangelism as my fact, every believer is an evangelist what is evangelist spreading a news selling a new selling a product <clears throat> um not too long ago a couple years down the line i met i met um i was in a conference and i met a gentleman who gave me his um his business card and when i look at it later on you know after this con conference everybody's giving you their card and all those things so later on i look at it and i and i saw evangelist well interestingly you see how 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 curious i was to see if hey, this is an evangelist among all the the car because this wasn't a, you know a christian event and so i look at oh evangelist i look at it <laughs> you know what he he evangelizes computers dell computers he's an evangelist for dell computers i said i'll be damned i've never seen anybody coin they are they are they are occupation like that evangelist of dell computers what is evangelism evangelism you were going out there or you were selling a product so believers what are we to go and sell eternal life by christ jesus that's it i'm trying to make your job easy for you that you stop seeing yourself as man me i'm shy i don't know what to say when i go down there what, what am i going to say and, and all that beloved go and sell you an evangelist every believer listen I, maybe you haven't had this but with my understanding of this every believer is an evangelist what are you evangelizing jesus christ and is his eternal life message salvation that's it and so if with all these you still cannot go out there then there's something wrong somewhere about your christianity because how are you excited about saying i'm a christian how excited are you oh you of course you have probably allowed religion to make you so miserable in your christianity by thinking that as a Christian, you're supposed to acquire stuff. And that stuff is not being able, to, you've not been able to acquire. And it's like, yeah, now you are believing the religious foolishness and nonsense that it is a demon from your family that has blocked you. But you have forgotten that Jesus said, all power in heaven and on earth is given to me all so if you want to know and look at people or whoever has power the, the one you are following for which you call yourself by him has all the power i hope you are learning something here because it, it's a, it's time that you know you 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 take a, a serious inventory of your whole christian life Ask some real good questions. Uh, look in the mirror and and talk to the person you see there with a with a with a clear questions. Because people are believing all kinds of beliefs. People are believing all kinds of beliefs, and and that's why Apostle Paul, and and I, and, I, and I, I I was there with him when he said that. I was there in the spirit. Ah, I knew I caught you. <laughs> When Apostle Paul said, anybody preaching any other gospel but that of Jesus, let that person be a curse. Let curse come upon that person. My goodness, that's serious. You know, all these, all these messages and teachings and all, all over the place, trying to make people think that Christianity is about 
acquire is about acquisitions. I have to be rich. And the richness they're talking about is all, you know, financial rich. And so, so interesting that you haven't even thought about this, that, that you are not thinking about eternal life. You are thinking about, about acquiring things that if your breath is gone out of this body, you are no longer in existence. And you ain't taking all that you are struggling to acquire. I mean, think about that. And those things that you are even struggling to acquire is, is to be added to your assignment of going to make disciples. <laughs> the things you are trying to acquire, you get up and you are. <laughs> Sometimes I talk to believers, some believers, it's like, I mean, who is teaching them what? Pastor, you don't know. Pastor, it's not easy. Pastor, it's not easy. Oh. <laughs> when you know the O comes in, then you know the type of people I'm talking about. Pastor, it's not easy. Oh. <laughs> Pastor, it's not easy. Oh. Pastor, <clears throat> Pastor, H M M M M M M. What is not easy? You are not believing right. Because you have not received right. Come with me to John chapter John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Come to John chapter 6. Uh, John chapter 6. Let's uh, I, I believe it's John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Um John, is it John 6? Let me see. It's here. John chapter 6. All right, let's look at um, uh, look at verse 30, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. Look at it. It is the spirit who gives life by the flesh conveys no benefit. It is of no account. It is of no account. The flesh profit nothing. The spirit gives life. The flesh gives nothing. What you say? What do you want? Life? Do you want life? Or do you want the flesh? Do you want life? Do you want life? Let me read that again to you and we'll finish with that. It is the spirit who gives life. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. The spirit gives life. The flesh conveys no benefit. It is of no account. The words I have spoken to you, Jesus is speaking here. Our spirit and life providing eternal life. The words, the words. Listen to Jesus. I'm, to, I'm going to take you back to the commission he, he has given to you and I in Matthew chapter 20, 28. Look at this. He said, The words, I believe that is in your Bible. And if you don't have your Bible, just write it down, go check it out. The words I have spoken to you. They are spirit and life. Life providing eternal life. Verse 63 again. The spirit gives life. Beloved, don't forget this. The spirit gives life. The flesh profits nothing. <laughs> he continues to say that this Jesus... The words I have, the words I have spoken to you, the words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, providing eternal life. Now, come back with me to Matthew 28. 
Matthew 28, look at verse 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Help the people to learn of me, believe in me, obey my words. Hmm. What words? Jesus said, the words that I speak to you are spirit and life, provided eternal life. So in other words, all that Jesus you stand for is eternal life. Beloved, therefore he says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Do you see why I am telling believers to do what I'm doing right now? That some of you are watching me. Do it. The, the very gadget you are using now to watch and, and hear me, use that gadget. Use that, whether it's your iPhone, your nose phone, your earphone, whatever phone you have, your laptop, your chest top, your head top, whatever computer you have, whatever system you have, use it. To reach the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Make disciples. He says, of all nations. Do you know that the computer now is in every nation? This technology. Facebook is in everywhere. Twitter is everywhere. YouTube is everywhere. Everybody. There are people in caves who all they need is getting an, a, 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 a network, which, in, I mean, interestingly, they do get network and can, can see you. You will capture the attention to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ concerning their salvation and eternal life. Jesus says, do it. Are you doing it? Or you are no longer a disciple. After hearing this message, you said, you know what? I, I think I'm not a Christian. Oh, really? Why? Because somebody else should go. You're telling Jesus, I, I, listen, Jesus, I can't do this. Mm -mm. No, 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 Jesus, I can't do this. This one is just, it's, I have received you as my Lord and my Savior. I, I, I am heavily booked and confirmed. My ticket is ready. The rest of the people, listen, I, I can't. Oh, really? Oh, really? Then you know why? You know what? You are not going to be having all that should be added to you. You will be struggling looking for it and you will fall in the hands of religious people who will fool you that you, you need to come and sow this. You need to do this sacrifice. You need to do that. You need to do that. I'm telling you, if you don't do it, you will fall in the hands of religious people. And ask yourself, how much have I been doing, doing all that I've been asked to do and I still not receiving nothing. Uh-huh. And like me years ago, religious people told me, you know, to do certain to do certain things, including fa fasting for 40 days. Because I have warehouse full of merchandise and nobody's buying. I mean, I wasn't making sales for whatever. I mean, it's like. Yeah, you know, business. And if you're a business person, you know what I'm talking. Sometimes I'm, I'm telling you, you go through some. I didn't even un understood that I was going through my pruning season, but I fell into the hands of religious people, and they told me to fast forty days. And in the course of the forty days, man, you're gonna see things turn around. Turn around. 
And the money that I was even looking for, the little that I have, I quote unquote, I sold it into that religious prison. <laughs> And I think you've heard me that say, share this testimony before. And on the 39th day, beloved, nobody has bought nothing. Man, no. <laughs> Let me tell you how religious I was. For you to know that I was, I was fasting with a religious belief and mindset. That I was so ticked off. Man, I was so angry with God. I, I, I. I, I said certain things. I'm not going to tell you. That's none of your business. I said certain things to God, man. <laughs> Only for me to go to church. I wasn't, even, I wasn't even a pastor then. Only for me to go to church on Sunday. This was a Saturday night. Breaking that, you know, 39th day fast. Said certain things to God instead of praying with them. Went to church on Sunday. And here... Oh, Lord, I tell you. Here is the, the, the associate uh, pastor who was br bringing the word, took the microphone, and the Spirit of God spoke through her. Asala Bab, she's going to be with the Lord. And uh, he says, mm, uh, the Lord is telling, I got to obey this. That's, what, that's how she goes. I got to obey this. God is telling me to tell somebody here. You just can't talk to me anyhow. Man, it's like somebody just hit my chest with a punch. I knew that was me. Because this was a night before going to church. <laughs> Said certain things to God, man, you have no idea. And then to make the matters worse for me, I felt like I want to crawl under the chair where I was sitting. To make matters what she continued to say, you know what? The Lord is saying to me to tell you, stop, eat, stop your fast. Stop that fast and eat. Oh, Lord. I, you know what? That was, the, that was the straw for me. So all that 40 days, how I could have enjoyed my ice cream with some nice pie, thanking God for his goodness. I deny myself with that religious mentality and belief, thinking that I'm fasting so that God will turn things around. Beloved, if you don't receive right, you're going to believe wrong, and you're going to live wrong, and you're going to act wrong. Jesus is eternal life. Jesus is not about your 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 in this in, in imagination of having a big house and big you know many cars and all that that's that, that's not jesus that is not jesus and that religious interpretation of jesus sitting on a on a on a donkey that nobody has sat on it and that was a brand new car if jesus was alive today he'll be wearing a designer clothes and all that you know religious bull teachings and preachings and getting people to be derailed in staying focused on the commission that Jesus has given to believers. If you don't go, how will they hear it? Or you want to be selfish? To just keep it to yourself. Beloved, <clears throat> no. For God so loved the world, everybody included. And if you say you love God, then you must. He gave his only begotten son. Can you give the only belief you have in Christ to make disciples? To evangelize. Can you do that? Or you just think that is a work of somebody. The Spirit of God says today when you hear his voice. Don't harden your heart. 
Don't harden your heart. Don't harden your heart. Make disciples today. Tell others about eternal life. Let them receive Jesus as their Lord and your Savior. And, I, and then the Holy Spirit will take over. Okay? The Holy Spirit is, is waiting to take over. Because when you open your heart to receive Christ, His Spirit then comes in. Scripture says that His Spirit identifies with our spirit. Why? Because we have received Him as our Lord and our Savior. So shall they. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is not going to any, you know. I told you about uh, one after one one of these broadcasts, and a, 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 a gentleman called, and uh, he he was about a, about a series of the Holy Spirit, and he he called. He says, um, um, I, "I I want the Holy Spirit. I, I I like what you were saying. You know, I I I was just flipping through, and uh, and and the, you know the social media. I saw you, and I, I like what you were saying. I like I want the Holy Spirit." So I started talking to him, asked him, you know, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? His answer was, no, I, I'm a Muslim. I can't do that. Really? I'm a Muslim. I, I can't do that. I, you know, my, my family will, will reject me. <clears throat> well, took me a, a, a period for me to speak to him. I haven't heard from him again. It reminded me of the scripture describing this young guy who came to Jesus. He wanted eternal life. How could he inherit the kingdom? The Bible says. How can he? He came to Jesus. Master, I have everything. How do I inherit the kingdom of God? Jesus told him what to do. The Bible says he couldn't do that. He said, I can do it. And he left. Feeling sad. How do you want to hold on to things that if you sleep, have a spiritual sleep from this earth, die, you're going to go with it. Where are you going to go? You don't even know where, you, where, where you're going to be. Beloved, eternal life and yet you are holding on to things. Go and ask people who have all these things I've mentioned. Big house, mansion. Transportation, just put them, whether it's a plane or a car or whatever. But they are on the bed of affliction. They have left all those things out there and they are on the bed of affliction and can do nothing. The house, big house they were struggling to build, I cannot heal them. What are you saying, Pastor? I am saying that don't, those things are not what you're supposed to be concentrating on. Seek ye first the kingdom. The guy did the opposite. He received all. He inherited all. Now he is coming to seek what's supposed to be first. The kingdom. And so Jesus told him, mm -mm, you missed it. It's the opposite. You seek first the kingdom and its righteousness. And all these things that you say you have inherited, you didn't even work for it, you inherited, will be added to you, be given to you. Believers today are doing the opposite. Beloved, let's get it right, okay? Let's get it right. If we are not in alignment with what Jesus 
has done for us. We will see those of you who, who have cars. When I talk about alignment, you understand when your your car, your tires, those four tires under the car, they are out of alignment. The car doesn't drive well. You see yourself struggling to, you know, you you know you you see you you can't even leave the the uh, the uh, the steering wheel for a second. It's like the car is going because out of alignment. I, I know I'm speaking to somebody, not everybody, to somebody, a believer. And if you are not a believer, who's a believer? The one who has received Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If you are not a believer, receive Jesus today. Jesus is about your eternal life. That is what matters. Not the current, you know, state of you even struggling to get things that it's almost like you, you get up in the morning and you are chasing the wind. Beloved, you ain't going to get it. You're not going to catch it. You chasing the wind. You're not going to catch it. Receive Jesus if you have not done so and have eternal life. Have peace. Come to the place of having peace. Peace within yourself. Peace. You just know. You come to the... Beloved, I don't know. I've come to the place that I just know. I just know that whatever I'm looking for will happen. I just know it. I just know it will happen. Why? Because he, I see his hand in certain things that I'm not struggling to do them. No. Mm -mm. That's the exciting part. Man, I wish I've known this years. <laughs> I'm telling you, what I... What I know, I wish I have known, but it's okay. Thank God I'm still alive and I, I know them now and I'm enjoying. Beloved, I, I'll share this and I'm going to close with this. You need to know and understand there's something in this grace dispensation. The benefits of it, you have not even scratched the face of it yet. You haven't scratched the face of it yet. Today I've gone a little bit longer than my usual time. Listen, huh? What, what did you say? <laughs> I'm, I'm getting signals that uh, I need to uh, just wrap it up. Well, I, I, I just love you to uh, pour out to you. I love you. I really do. I really do. I am going to all the nations to make disciples. Pastor, how are you doing that? That's exactly what I'm doing. Because right now, people from all nations are watching me. And somebody is giving their life to Jesus. And you should be one of them too. If you have not done that, give your life to Jesus today. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life. Yes, Pastor, I, I have given my life to Jesus. Well, I want to pray with you. I want us to pray. And for those of you believers, it is time for you to rise up and go make disciples. You've had you've had the great commission. It's your commission. It's not for the pastors. It's not for the evangelists. It's not for the prophets. It's not for the teachers. It's not for the preachers. It's for you, the Christian, the follower of Christ the believer. And so you've given your life to Jesus now. I want us to pray. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10 verse 10, you believe that in, believe him in your heart. Receive him, believe him in your heart and confess him with your mouth that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Your salvation is in your belief in Christ. Your salvation it's in your belief in Christ Jesus. And to know that he, has, he, he did all that for you. And he said it's finished. 
He finished his work. It's it's about it's time for you to start yours. He's finished his work. So receive him. I want us to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this message and this teaching. I am convinced that I am a sinner who have not received you and receive you well as my Lord and my Savior. Today, I receive you right. I am receiving you right in my heart and in my life. Come into my, my life. Take residence in my heart. And now, Lord Jesus, baptize me with your spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus, in your name I pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, if you pray that prayer, the next thing I want you to do is to get yourself your Bible. Get the Bible. If you don't have one, get one. Now, if you cannot afford one, let us know. We'll send you a Bible. Make sure we send you a Bible. Okay? We have embarked on a one million Bible distribution to unbelievers, those who do not have Bibles, so that you can read. All right? We are, we are doing our best to also come against the force of religion so that you can read, read, read your word and receive right. Okay? So make sure that you join us in this crusade. Vision 2020. We want to make sure that by end of 2020, one million people have received Bibles. And so I'm also employing, I'm employing all of you, those of you who are part of this ministry, by way of, you know, coming on every day to receive. It's time to give. Give a Bible. Not asking you to give anything for, for me to go on vacation. Give a Bible. How many Bibles do you want to give? Pastor, somebody have said, Pastor, I want to give 100 Bibles. All right? Pastor, I want to give 50 Bibles. I want to give 1,000 Bibles and all that. If you can get the Bibles and bring it, glory be to God. We want it. Make this, get the simple English one. Also, we are giving Bibles in different languages, okay, because we are reaching the world. Okay, so those in Pakistan receive Bibles in their language. Those in India, Bibles have to go there in their language. All right. Um, in Ghana, the, the local dialects, uh, the, the, the Twi, the Twi, yesterday we got the prize for a Twi Bible from the Challenge Bookshop and all that. We want to get Bibles. On the old, on the, so um, you, besides you maybe wanting to get Bibles and send it, I'm also asking you to send your donation, financial donation, so that we'll be able to get these Bibles in the different dialects and, and all that for people. All right, so send your best donation today. I mean, that's based on the number of Bibles you want to get. If you want to get, I mean, we're talking about between now, so we're talking about one year, a year by next month. We're supposed to finish by the 31st of December, 2020. We should be celebrating the goodness of God that we have distributed 1 million Bibles and be part of this so we can celebrate together. So if you, you want to send your, your um, donation, okay, and let me know first. Don't just Nicodemusly send a donation. I want to know how many Bibles do you want to get, okay? Be part of this. So me and my house, it is well with me and my house. And me and my house, we are going for 500 Bibles. That's what I want to know. So don't, don't Nicodemusly, all right, send $50 or $100. I'm not so much interested in the money. I'm interested to know how many Bibles do you want to get? I want to know that. Okay? I want to know that. So I want to hear from you. All right? I want to hear from you. Send me a... <clears throat> um, uh, go to the, the email. You can use the email to let me know, or you can call to let me know. The number here is area code 914 246 2421. Okay, 
914-246-2421. Or if you want to go to the, um, um, you want to send that message by the messenger, you can do that. You want to also, you know, reach us by, through the, uh, the, um, the email, the address is icfm29, the number 29, at gmail.com. I want to hear from you. I want to know how many Bibles you want to send. We want to bless people with Bible. So if you have just given your life to Jesus and um, you don't have a Bible, get one. If you cannot afford one, let us know. We'll send you one. All right. Most importantly, look for a Bible teaching, believing church and be part of that. Introduce yourself, whichever country you are, and let them know that you have received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. You're born again. And you need to be baptized. You need to be submerged in water. You need to be, it's a symbol of our Christian life. Jesus was baptized in water by John, his cousin, in water. And so you have to be, you got to do that. On that note, those of you who have said, I, I, I would like to be baptized in the River Jordan, the same place where Jesus was baptized. All right, join us in our um, pilgrimage to Israel in 2020 also, or in the month of, of April. Go to the website and get that information or even on the Facebook. If you go to the, the page, I believe also, you can get that uh, flyer there. The information is on the off call, the same number 914-246-2421. So we can give you further information about that to be part of it if you want to be baptized in the river Jordan, where Jesus was baptized also. That will be next April, 2020. All right, so do that. I want to hear from you. I will need to hear from you about this Bible very seriously. Every one of you, you and your house, as it is well with you and your house, because it is well, I want to hear from you. So let's do that, okay? I, I thank you for that. I thank you for that. Now, don't forget, pick up your Bible and read. Go to the library of this ministry, read, all right, click on the, that's the YouTube. Go to the YouTube, click on the, the subscribe button. Okay, you put the name Patrick Queno Ministries or Patrick Queno. You see that and then get the messages that you have missed. Okay, now, um, I think that's it for the day. I think that's it for the day. There's nothing else to, um, to add to it other than make sure Again, you go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. Go and make disciples and, um, and um, receive all that is, should be added to you. Heaven is waiting to add some stuff into your life. Go and do it. Go and make disciples. Okay? God bless you. As always, I want you to know you don't have no trouble. You don't have no trouble. All you need is your faith in God. And in all you're getting, get understanding. Have a wonderful day. God bless you. See you.